To give us some context, can you briefly explain the ruling by the Court of Arbitration for Sport last year, which allowed Kasta to compete without regulating her testosterone levels? Yeah, this is uh, this is honestly the most complex issue in sport. I mean, doping is a big deal, but you know that's at least a little bit black and white. You know when someone's cheating or not. This is a little bit more difficult to even deal with because it's ethical, human rights, and performance issues all kind of bundled together. And the 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 story obviously around Semenya goes back to 2009, but let's let's put Semenya and individual aside for a moment and talk about the concept. The concept is that there is a group of athletes who are called intersex, which means that they don't fall neatly into either a male or female category. And they have posed problems for international sport for the last 60 years, in that officials haven't known exactly how to deal with them. And since about 2009, in the aftermath of Semenya's controversy in Berlin, the policy was that an intersex athlete, which, which in this case usually is a person who genetically is male, but they can't develop as a male, and the result is that they develop characteristics of a female. So they, they grow up living lives effectively as females, and they've got high testosterone levels. Now the question is, do they have an advantage? And the policy for a very long time was that they had to lower their testosterone levels below a certain level, which was set at a, at a cutoff point of 10. And then last year in July, the Court of Arbitration for Sport heard a case of one such athlete who was an Indian sprinter. And they decided after a few days worth of deliberation and hearings and witness testimonies that there was not enough evidence yet for the IAAF to enforce that law. And as a result, that cutoff limit of 10 had to be taken away. And therefore, any intersex athlete, this is again, it's a person usually competing as female, but with usually with internal testes producing testosterone, could compete without a limit on their testosterone levels. And as a result of that, there will be a number of these such athletes in, in uh, Rio this week. But the one that the world knows about, thanks to the <laughs> mess ups, basically, of 2009 is Casta Semenya. So so the concept is the issue, and she is unfortunately the focal point for it. Now, I know we're trying to look at the broader issue, but like you say, Casta has become the focal point, especially for South Africans. In your opinion, does Casta have an unfair advantage, as the foreign media contend, and is their argument based on a solid scientific foundation? There's a foundation for it. So when the, when the Court of Arbitration for Sport made their decision, they deliberated, as I said, for a few days, and the ultimate conclusion was that the use of testosterone did have a scientific basis, that it does improve performance, that there is no difference between the testosterone that is produced internally or compared to that which you inject, and of course, as you may know, that's, that's illegal. However, their decision was made on the basis that there was insufficient evidence as yet as to whether that was a large enough advantage to have to be regulated. So in other words, th there were reasons to say that you should look at this, and that's why they, they didn't throw out the upper limit. They said to the IAAF, you've got two years to see if you can come back and provide enough evidence. So that's, that is literally what the Court of Arbitration decided. So in, in one sense, that's the decision, and, and, and to some extent I do agree with it. I have sympathy for both sides. Um, you know, testosterone is the male hormone which is responsible for the development not only of males in terms of our reproductive system, that happens when we're in the womb, it's the reason that at birth a doctor can say this is a boy or a girl, that's testosterone does that. And it's also responsible for many of the physical changes that happen at puberty. So you can watch young boys and girls playing sport together and they are exactly equal, but after puberty and then into adolescence, there is no longer a chance that those children can play together. So we have to, at that point, separate men and women into separate categories. And the reason we do that is because if we didn't, it would be completely unfair on women. So a woman who now has no testosterone, or not no, but very, very little testosterone, I, I can see the, the, the side of their argument saying, like, this is, this is an advantage that is not the same as someone who's just genetically better than me at sport. This is an advantage that goes to the core of whether someone is 
male or female in terms of their physiology. So I, I do sympathize. And I, I thought personally that the upper limit that the IAAF had set was a fair compromise because it didn't take the testosterone away entirely, but it also didn't allow it to be as high as, as we've seen some evidence for it being. So uh, I don't know that I would call that an unfair advantage because she's not cheating. So in that regard, it's not unfair. But I do think it is an advantage that would be regulated if, if, it was, if the intention was to ensure integrity and, and more level uh, playing field across the entire category. Now, Castor has had to endure repeated humiliation. And if she wins, the scrutiny is likely to be intense. How do we protect her right and her dignity and her privacy and her right to compete while simultaneously protecting the rights of other athletes, other female athletes to compete on a level playing field? <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately you, you can't, right? And that's the problem is that there is, no, there is no solution to this that satisfies every single person. However, the one thing which is unquestionably true is that the dignity and the rights of an individual have to be protected in, in the wider discussion. So an athlete who comes second or third who, who gets beaten, that, that sucks for them. And they've put four years of effort into competing in their sport and, they, and they've ended up being beaten. And yeah, you can feel some sympathy for them. But that's not justification for being vicious and cruel and aggressive about the person who beat them. And unfortunately, that's what happens. Now, I, the spotlight on this issue has already been intense. And I, I almost can't imagine it getting any worse, but it will be. It's going to be unbelievable when she wins, and I'm pretty confident that she'll win gold next weekend. And and I hope, you know, I've seen in response to some of her previous results, people will go out there and they'll call her a man, which is not true. They'll say he and him deliberately just to be offensive instead of her and she. Some people go so far as to call Casta Semenya it. And th these things are just unacceptable, disgraceful. And I, there's no way you can stop that because the, <laughs> the world, unfortunately, sometimes behaves like the lowest common denominator. And, and I, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. In the end, it's a medal, you know. Um, and this, the fact is someone's not going to win a medal. And you can say, yes, that this is, this is not right and the situation needs to be fixed. But the fact that they haven't won a medal is, is no justification for, for being vicious about a person's medical details and, and identity. So I, I, hope, I hope that that doesn't happen. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we know that it will because people are like that and it's happened before. But I guess the, the request and the message is that you can, you can agree about her participation or you can disagree but you can do it in a human, dignified way and show people a little bit of respect at the same time. So while many well, people are suggesting that we should be asking why are we still talking about whether Custer should be allowed to compete or not, perhaps the question should be, can we afford to avoid having a meaningful, meaningful, respectful global dialogue about the influence of sex and gender on professional sport and how to create measures that protect all athletes? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And to your latter point, I think it's very important that these issues are discussed. Um, you know, as I said, my opinion is that that upper limit of testosterone was a, a fair, although imperfect, I mean, I'm not saying it was a perfect compromise, but I think it was a fair and good one. Uh, there are people who disagree with me, and that's fine. Um, because, and, and again, if you, if you approach the direction, you know, you've got this issue standing there. Some people are looking at it from the perspective of performance and physiology and biology, and that, that would be me. Other people are looking at it from the perspective of human rights and ethics and so forth, and their, their position would be different, and that is absolutely fine. There's no, there's no problem with disagreeing as long as there's a civilized discussion about it. The, the, the problem is, and unfortunately, Castasomania is a magnet for this kind of uh, problem, is that people then get very personal about it, and that breaks down the discussion. So, so I, I don't think that we should not talk about it just because it's a sensitive subject and just because it's a South African athlete. I would, I would again, I'd far rather talk about the broader concept. I hate that there's a person who has a face and a name and a personality who is, is introduced into the discussion. I mean, I wish we were sitting here today talking about the concept of intersex athletes instead of, oh, look, Castor Semenya. That, that's, 
that to me is one of the biggest barriers. Um, but that's the reality, thanks to 2009. But yeah, I don't think I don't think that we shouldn't have a discussion at all. I think that would be as irresponsible. I think progress will come from talking about it, but only if that discussion and conversation is, is civilized and thoughtful and not directed personally at anyone, especially Semenya. Thank you so much for your time. That was sports scientist Dr. Ross Tucker. And while that conversation is ongoing, we can happily say, Semenya, go for gold. <laughs>